Hello, Internets, and welcome to my review for Fairy Tale episode 284, Memoirs. Uh, when we last left off, not soon in the game, we're wrapping up their fight with Avatar, uh, with Arlok getting one shot, and then Arlok summoning Ikusatsu Nagi, and then Ikusatsu Nagi getting one shot, which was a lot more fun than I remembered it. I remember hating it, and I did not hate it this time. Uh, and the gang kind of hung out as they, like, stood around all the defeated Avatar members. And that's where we leave off. Uh, and so we jump right in this week with the long-awaited Zarek backstory. And good lord, is this stuff important, and incredibly, like, well-tying back into the earlier arcs. Uh, and well-written. The Zarek backstory is phenomenal. It's not as phenomenal as uh, some of the later backstories we'll get. Mavis is, like, bar none when we finally get her post-Zero backstory. Uh, and it also ties into Zara's backstory. We need to get, we need to see Zara's backstory first before we get to Mavis later on. Uh, so all I'm gonna say about Mavis because she she does not show up this uh, this chap this episode. Uh, but yeah, we jump right into the Zara backstory. And honestly, I kind of wish we had gotten just the tiniest bit of setup before we jumped right on in. You know, like the episode opens with uh with like Zara flying in the grass, and then we see um. We see, like, he's instantly in his head 400 years ago at the Mil Mildon, Mildian Academy, whatever it's called. Um, and I, I wish we'd gotten the tiniest setup for it. We do eventually get a kind of frame story, uh, but it's only after he, like, we see baby Zareph get his, like, dissertation on life and death rejected. Um, but yeah, also the, the, the frame story is, like, really weirdly fourth wall breaking. Like, Zareph is just kind of... I think he, I think he's talking to the book of E&D we see at the end. Uh, but even then, it's still, it feels like he's talking to us. And that's... I think it works for the most part. Um, but it is still kind of odd. I admit. Uh, and so, I do really love how the Zareph flashback puts in all these little details from Ark's past. You know, all, all throughout it, we see these kind of things. Uh, starting with the R system, the revive system... Uh, that the Tower of Heaven was going to be used to do. Tower of Heaven, as you'll recall, was just the gigantic revive system waiting for the Ethereon Blast. Um, and, you know, as as Jalal tried to revive Zareph, even though, of course, Zareph was not dead. Um, so, yeah, seeing that again is a quick, is a reminder that, like, that, that there is actually a lot of truth to the Zareph mythos, I guess. Uh, unlike Avatar, that's like, oh, he's this dark god of destruction. You know, he's, he's a man who was super interested in life and death. Uh, and there's a very important irony in Zareph's characters here. Because we see Zareph in the past wanted to, like, cheat death as a way of reviving Natsu, who we, who we learn. Uh, I'll get to him in a little bit. Um, he wants to revive his younger brother. Uh, and, and especially given now that his current goal is just to die. There's definitely, like, a cruel irony, which is very much Anxaram's thing, you know? The, the, the whole Curse of Contradiction is based in this cruel irony, you know, the more you love, the more you kill, uh, and there, that, there's definitely, it's, it's predicated on irony, uh, and Zareph is also, Zareph's whole goals is also super ironic as a result of Anxaram's curse. Uh, also, pay super close attention to, um... The Academy uh, professor mentioning the Eclipse Project. Um, the Eclipse Project is old, as we will we'll get into a lot more detail on what exactly the Eclipse Project's original purpose was. Um, but it was already in the works 400 years ago. That's important to remember. It will very much there. It, it, it will be a very major part of the series finale. Um, so keep that in the back of your mind. Eclipse has been around for a while, uh, and then. We have the reveal. The reveal. Zareph's last name is Dragneel. Natsu is not just some demon he created. He's his younger brother back alive. And so the brother reveal is a lot more casual than I remember it just off the bat. You know, in the manga, I remember like having no idea it was coming until those fateful words, Zareph Dragneel, were spoken. And I was like... Holy shit. Uh, but here, it's, like, kind of casually, like, brought up at the very beginning of all of this. Uh, you know, before he goes back in the back in the backstory, he mentions, you know, he is, it sounds like he's talking to Natsu for a bit. And 
in the same breath, he talks about his brother, and they seem kind of connected, as I recall. And then, you know, even in the scene where he revives Natsu, it's super like, oh, yeah, there you are, hi. Uh, he, 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 we see Natsu, and he, says my, and he says my brother's resurrection, and there's not really any of the what-the-fuck moment, I remember. Maybe it's because, you know, this, again, happened three years ago in the manga, and I've known that they were brothers for three, three and a half years now, actually. Um, but, like, it felt a lot more casual than I remember it. Um, that's kind of where the backstory ends for now. Again, we will get a lot more backstory on Zerif. Um, probably January, December, maybe, somewhere in there. Uh, judging, judging, judging by the rate we're going, of like, normally being three chapters a week. Uh, but then we get Human Acnologia, who was foreshadowed in the opening, and I believe he shows up in Dragon Cry. Uh, which is really weird. Again, I've still not seen Dragon Cry. I will see it at some point, I promise. Uh, but yeah, we do see a human Acnologia. Uh, this was the first time we saw him in the manga, and it was like, oh shit, you know, he still has a human form. Because, like, as I recall, Igneal and the others implied that if, if our Dragon Slayers went Dragon, there would be, like, no coming back. Uh, but Acnologia definitely does go back and forth throughout the series. Uh, as we'll see as we move into the final arc. Um, and that whole cave scene is really good. You know, as, as Zeref is like, oh, I've set out the, the battle so far because I didn't know where I was, who I, who, what side I was on. Am I on you, on your side, wiping out the humans? Am I on the human side, wiping out you? And he's like, no. I'm on neither side, wiping out both. Get ready for a three-way battle between a human and a mortal and a dragon. And, like, that whole scene, Mashima, I've said it once, I've said it a, I'll say it a thousand times, Mashima is amazing at building hype. And this is one of his best hype-building scenes since, like, that post-Grand Magic Games conversation between Zaref and Mavis. You know, the one who'll be massacred is you scene, which is his best hype-building scene in the entire series, I'd argue. Uh, and this is this is definitely up there. It's so good. It's seeing Zaref and Akinologia just kind of, like, glare at each other even if even if it's kind of weird they don't like fight right there but you know what i'll i'll, I'll ignore it because it were it works to like not have the series end right now <laughs> um and then we need to talk about this episode structure because it's this chapter this episode more than any really other in the at least in the final series so far is very clearly marked by, like, which chapter in the manga it is. You know, the the Zeref and Acnologia stuff is very clearly one chapter, and then Fairy Tale is very clearly the other. Um, and, like, it, it works. You know, it, it, it's, it's definitely the most obvious that, like, this is an adaptation and not an original story right there. Um, but you know what? It is an adaptation. I'm, I don't have a problem with it being an adaptation. Uh, as we see, uh, Natsu and the gang return to Magnolia to reform Fairy Tale. As we find out, Lucy has sent letters to like all the members of Fairy Tale that she could find, uh, inviting them back to Magnolia. And I don't have a lot to say about this section because it's just unlike the other the other part where we're like we're learning all these details of the world's past. This just feels good, you know. All I can really say about the the Lucy and the gang go back to Magnolia is it just feels really really warm and fuzzy, you know, we do get a quick reminder that, you know, even though I had a lot of fun last week, the Avatar arc is super pointless, they tell them nothing about Xerath, um, but, but this, the scene is so, so pure, you know, we do get, there is a really good bit, uh, Lucy's whole, like, fear about the gang leaving, the gang not coming back is very clearly drawing her experiences with Wendy and not wanting to come back initially and having to be, like, persuaded by, uh, Shalia. Um, so that, that was a nice little, like, bit of character growth. But then, they all came back anyway, and Lucy is cry Like, when, when the Straussers showed up, like, I was, I was, like, super, like, smiling, this big-ass grin on my face the whole time. And then you hear Elfman, and I'm like, I, like, squeaked out, the Straussers! And I started crying. And, oh, I love this show so much. You know, I said I said last week that like Fairy Tale, in my opinion at least, has like the best cast in Shonen, and like I, I stand by that. There, there is no cast 
I think I just feel such feelings of love for, like the cast of Fairy Tale. You know, they're a giant, wholesome family, and I love them. They are so, so lovely, and ah, I, I was crying right along with Lucy there. And then when Natsu, you know, hoists up the tattered flag, Fairy Tale is back. Damn right it is. Fairy Tale is back, and we're moving on to the final arc. Next week, the final arc begins. Alvarez Empire, here we go. Uh, yeah. All in all, this is, without a doubt, the best episode of the final series so far. There will definitely be more that sur surpass it. The Mavis backstory, as I've said, is definitely going to surpass it unless they completely botch it. If they don't completely botch it, it'll be better than Zara's backstory. Uh, and then we, you know, we get that Zara backstory. We get that great showdown between him and Akno. And then the whole return of the guild to Magnolia. It's all so good. I love Fairy Tale so much. I just, I, re I so love Fairy Tale. I adore this series. It's been one of my favorites since I was like in middle school, and is it's kept me through college, you know. Uh, so yeah, next week the final arc begins uh, as we move towards the series end game in a hundred chapters. I will add, it's a, we are a long way away. Series went off for some reason. Anyway, we are a long way away from uh, from the show's ending, but we're we're moving into the, we're moving to the end game. Uh, so yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna leave this video off here. Hope you all enjoyed the episode and the video. If you did, feel free to drop me a like or subscribe or do whatever the fuck you want. I don't really care. And as always, people, keep kicking ass, and I'll see you in the future. Bye.